Hello, welcome to the Non-Top YouTube tutorial session. So in this session, we continue from where we stop in Web Development Framework with Flux Framework. So in this session, we'll be discussing on linking pages together, then I'll be introducing you to some HTTP method in Flask. So let's get started. So before we proceed, I will implore you to subscribe to this YouTube channel to get notifications on the subsequent videos released. So thank you so much. Let's proceed. In the last previous videos, we introduced ourselves to Flask. Then we did some little introduction. Then we also created pages and also see how to link static files and template files. So in this session, we'll first discuss how to link two pages your HTML pages together. So let's say you have a home page, which is this. This is our home page. Okay, I think our application is not running. So I'll try to run our application now. Okay, so it's running now. The first page we created was the slash about, okay, slash home, then slash about. We also use the redirect slash login and slash my store. Okay, so let's say that we have a page of slash login. Within this page, you might need to be put a link within this place where is our click. Then it's going to redirect to another page. So let's say that this is our page. Okay, I'm going to open the HTML files, which is from Notepad++ that I'm using. So yeah, I'm going to just include a link. Okay. So I'm going to use this to be empty for now. Okay. Slash A. So in this place, I'll say that my store is supposed to be a link. It's supposed to be a link. So if I refresh this, I'll have my store, which is now a link. So what I want to do is to be able to click here, then it's going to move to my store. So this link should be linked to my store. Okay. So what you need to do is like to call this, we can just do it simply by moving it to my store.html. But I always prefer you to to like what I mean that, like I said, that my store.html to see if it's going to move to my store because I think we have store.html instead of my store. So that is the HTML for now, template folder. Excuse me, timing. Now, template folder. So we have the store.html. We might try to see if this is going to work, which I believe it should into my templates you can see it's having something a particular error so to link it properly what we we'll do is to make some we'll call that particular function so to call a function use the url for function in flask but to do that first use this particular link uh, you, you put it inside a parameter so i can use the whole button like this to put this top uh, Two coil brackets and opening and closing two coil bracket. So this opening coil bracket and closing coil bracket, that is where you put your function. In this case, we call a particular function in our app. So I'm trying to call this particular function called the run stop, which means that if user click on this, this particular function will be called. And once this particular function called, there is going to open our store.html. So that's how you link two pages together in Flask. So it means that we are calling this function. Then you also need to call this URL for, you see that URL underscore for. So this is the function we are using to call this. Anytime you use a coil bracket within your HTML, it means that you are trying to run I uh, just we are trying to point it at a Python code. The URL for it is a Python, it's like you are running a Python function now. 
So that's how it looks like. So and this is our Python function we are running. This one here. So let's see if it's going to work. So you can see it links fine. It links fine. So that's how you link two two pages together. So you always call the function to link it properly. So this is going to take us to parameters generally in in Flask. So parameters Flask works like you are templating. In web development, what to do is like templating. Like you have a template that you want to put a particular parameter into it. Then this particular template could be identified with a point at using the coily bracket. So this is what I, I mean by this. So let's say that instead of this, we have a paragraph tag or a span. Let's say we have a paragraph tag. And what is now paragraph tag? It's a template, like a template. And this is how we used to identify the template. This coil open and closing coil bracket, double one. So you can just put any parameter. So you put two to opening and closing coil bracket. I can put any parameter here. So I can put uh, anything like any variables. So in this case, I'm going to say that my name is name of the variables. These variables is understandable by your Python code. Now yes, you can be able to point at these particular variables in our Python code. That's what we're doing in web development. So if I run this, everything works fine. But within our login, I can try to point at this particular my name that I created the template for within our login. So while returning the login, is the uh, template file. So I'm just going to say that my name equal to laptop. So in this case, I've tried to be able to call this function slash login. Tell you that once you have this slash login, the template I've created should be replaced with this my name. You just replace with this particular string. The template my name should be replaced this. In case you do not put anything within the template, then you get you don't have anything being displayed in the template. So this is what it means. Let's say that instead of this template, I just say that the land top. So you have it being displayed here. So land top. But instead of using this, I have a parameters being displayed. Now it's replacing it with the parameters. You can see everything is working fine. Land top. So you can see that this land top is being replaced by this particular my name. If it is Mr. Lantop now, we have Mr. Lantop being displayed instead of Lantop because we are returning the page alongside with the parameter values, which is Mr. Lantop. Mr. Lantop is the parameter values, which is pointing at my name variables. So that's how you pass in for our parameters into your HTML template. So what exactly is this being used for? Useful for the usefulness of this is that let's say that you have a particular page that needs so many templating in your web development page. You, uh, you always template template. You can create a template for student for student profile. Like you want to insert student profile, which could be different name. It's not static. It's not static, it's not for a particular name. Then this particular my name could be gotten from our database storage for a particular student based on the login details. So this is what is being used for. Templating can also come in different way. You can template image files, you can template anything within your HTML content. So these are the rules, just create a coil bracket, put the parameter variables, then anytime you are returning it, then point it at the parameter values, which is like this. Okay, so let's try to create a new application of this. In this case, let's say that a user is trying to log in by clicking on submit. Submit. If user is trying to log in by clicking on submit, which means that you want to take in the username and password and try to make query with that, then possibly display that in a new page. Display the username of that particular person in the new page. Let's say you have a particular profile, you want to display it to it. However, I'm just going to point this that at the my store point, which means that I want to create a particular application that user will submit this query 
then the username will be taken into the next page so let's try to do that so this is going to take us to the post and get method in this what i'm trying to do is a post method post and get method at two method in http in which you post into the uh, server and we also get things from the server so this is how it works we want to use that you need a particular function in flask body so this particular function in flask is the request so the request we allows us to use this method okay so another important thing we have to also put is the options of methods in my options of method i'm going to include the post method as well as get method. so these are my two methods this option is a new argument in our roots in app.root is another argument in parameter values. So if you have not provided this method, you won't be able to use this method. But now we are, can use put the method of post and get method. I included it in my login because that is where I'm going to log in. Then the server should understand that I'm actually trying to post this information into the server. Then I should be able to get it from the next page. Okay, so let's get started. So what we want to, to do is like to get the particular parameter values for username and the input values for user and name and also the input values for password. So this is how you do that. Yeah, instead of this input, I will also include a particular uh, property called name. Then I'm going to call this username. These properties I have to point it at in my application file. So I'm going to point it at password. So I have these two property name. It's the name property that is used to post. It's the name property that is used to post. Another important thing that you need to also include here is your actions. So the your action would tell you that. In case you want to submit this particular button, this function should be called. What function am I usually calling if I want to submit the button? What function am I calling? Now, I want to call a particular function called, I still want to call the same function, which is the login. Let's try to call the same function, which is the login. So in this same template, you can use the same template. So you can just copy this and put it here. So instead of this one stop, I'm going to run call the login function, which is this. I'm calling this function again. Then if we proceed forward, then we can also specify the method that we are using. We need a get method and a post method. We can also specify the get method. So this is a specified method in the HTML file. So this is going to sign out the both the HTML file and the uh, app file. So the both will be synchronized together that this is using the post and get method. This is also using the post and get method. Okay. Let's proceed, which means that if you are submitting the button here, this function will be called then this function actually know that it is the post and get method that it is being used. Okay, so let's proceed. Now in your app.py, so you know that we are calling a function, but what we want to do now is like, we want to say that if, we want to use a condition that if user is using a post method, Normally, we can say that slash login, then it's going to return this template. But within our function, we want to say that when user is trying to use a post method with this slash login, then something else should happen. So let's say that if request <coughs> that method equals to, it's actually a post method. If request that method equals to post, then what we want to do is like we want to get the username which is from here using this particular name property so the name property here for the username 
is also username. Then this is how we get it. We say that request dot form. So we use requested form to get it. So in our request dot form, the first name is the username, also password. It's also the password. With this, we are able to get, let's see if I have this thing on the phone. Yeah, it's on the phone. With this, we are able to get this and this. So instead of returning this, we still need to return this. We want to what return your I'm just going to use a percentage S and your password is. So this might need some basic understanding of Python. So this is just templating password. So I will see if we will be able to get the username and the password. I will be returning the login page again after user login using the post method. I'll be returning these particular strings. Okay, let's try to see if everything works for you. Let's refresh this. I'm just going to put one of values here and give it to one of This is actually not a password protected. To make it a password protected, you can quickly call this password. Change this color parameter values to password. So I'll be submitting this, which you call this function. Then it's going to determine that, but it's actually a post method. Then this is going to be executed. So let's see. Okay, so in case it doesn't work fine, so I believe let's try to use the post method alone here first and see if everything works fine. So you can see it works fine now. Your name is Landtop and your password is Landtop. So this we are able to get and input values of a user, then paste it to a new page, which is the slash login. Do you understand that? So this particular procedure makes everything change, like getting a particular input values. So from the input values, let's say I want to check username and password from the database. I would have get the database using any link or any plugins. It might be my SQL database of the postural SQL database. So I would have gotten the database, then I'll compare the username and password from it. This is the procedure of using the get method. This is the procedure of using the get method. This allows us to get input of the users for this is the using the post method. I mean, it allows us to get the input of user once user try to submit a button. This is actually connected to the form. Which is this. So we use the name properties. The name properties are username and the password, which is also pointing at this and this. So this name, username and password is just a variables which means that what we get from here is stored in as, a, as an assignment into this variable. What we also get from here is stored as an assignment in this, this variable. So this is going to be displayed here. It's going to be displayed here. So let's say that you want to, instead of this, you are returning a new page, which is my store. I'm returning this my store. This my store, my study. So in this my store also, I'm going to, Check if I can add a template here. So I'll be adding a template here. 
okay, parameter values. So this is what will be the template. I'm just going to see that I'll span, I'll slash span. And I'm going to see that is an so in this case, the store HTML file now has a particular parameter that can also be passed in. So in this case, I will not say that the username parameter, but let me just say that user to make sure that everything is not crashing. So this user, so this user parameter here is equal to username from here. Which means I will get what the user login, the login details of the user. They will use it to assign it as the, the template value in the HTML file my store. So let's see if it's going to work fine. But this doesn't matter now. So you can see username equals username is on top. So that is how you'll be making pass into passing a particular parameters into another one. In, okay, so let's now proceed further. Let's proceed further. So in this particular session, we discussed how to create like a restriction page. If you want to create a restriction page, if this is particular tutorial is useful for you. Then in case you want to create a registration page where you can pull in information, then post it into a database. You can create a simple registration page like this. I'm going to call this register HTML. Then it's going to look like this also. Instead of this first username, I'm going to put first name. So make it a bit right, make it a bit better. So it's going to be our last name. Last name. Password. Just input um, so our station page should look fine. This so this is going to have a value of sign up instead of this one to pay. To get everything installed into our app or the our server, then I'm going to create a page called register. So this is also called. Start page. So let's see if everything works fine. Our app is still running fine. So I'm going to see that slash register instead of slash login. So this is my sign up page. I'm going to put in line. So this is my sign up page. So what you want to do is like get parameter values from here, get parameter values from here, get parameter values from here. The parameter values for you. So they can do anything with it. Maybe just put it into insert into a new in the table in your database. So this is how it works. So it's similar to this login page. It's similar to this login page, we must first register our methods. So we go to post. It's also a post method, which means that by visiting slash register, then this is going to be displayed. And I'm going to put a condition for the post method. 
like if user submit using the register, then it's calling the post method. Same thing like this. Now we have to use our property. The first one I'll call it FA, which signifies for the first name. The second one I'll call it. This one I'll call it. Let's do this. I'll call this one P1. And this we'll be able to get. All this information so we need a similar thing like this the first one is first name and the name property is f name the next one is l name so i'm going to call this variable last name and I think this P word. And it returned this particular. Okay, what should it return? I'm just going to return the same. Okay, let's try to return a new pitch. This will be the new page we return. In this new page, I just click and call it uh, our database. Just like a representation, a demonstration for database. Just a demonstration. Now, actually, we'll be to connecting this to database. Slash protein mistakes that protein. Okay, so let's take so, so in this case I would put templates like those templates, paragraph templates, slash templates, let's call each one our templates. You see that your clips like your registration is registration, registration, registration is successful. Then registration is successful, then I'm going to see that. I'm going to call, I'm going to call um, the same paragraph and I'm going to call the first name. That's it. the same first name is this first name. Okay, let's say F name. Okay, you can paste this. Paste this, paste this, so for the four parameters, last name, um, email, email, and password. So in this particular variable, call it the end name, um, this one should be email, then this should be. Okay, so 
this one is actually submitting this then this is what everything is calling then i'm going to return i'm going to return this particular database into the database database dot html then knowing that there are parameter values taken by this which include the uh, f name or f name will be equal to then our last name will be head name will be equal to Same thing. The name is email. The template the name is email. Is email. The keyword is the name. It's equal to password. So this how it works. This how it should work. Then let's see if everything works fine. Okay. Our phone values is register. Okay. We need to just include the first thing I call it uh, the last name call it for money. And this I call it for money. So then password I'll just put in the number. Say our database, every information is being displayed. Your registration is successful. First name is Alan Waju, last name is Fanboy, email, laptop ng, then password is pretend. So that's how you connect values. In case, for example, let's say I want to instead of this, uh, instead of posting it, just opening it in the page, I want to just post it into my mice a database a new database so this is where you put your code to insert all these values into your database so you put it just after this line then you insert all these values these are registering into the database but we'll be doing that in this particular tutorial okay so let's try to discuss something important again so we we'll quickly discuss on the the get method also so you can see that we'll discuss on the post method very well how to post something to the server then you can do anything with everything you post into the server maybe you are pulling it into your a new database okay so let's say that we have instead of all this we have there are, these are links These are links instead of this. Okay, let me put the links inside my L1, L1 list tags. So these are links. There's also a link. There's also a link. This is the last link. So in this first link, you have href. So the href is also to call this particular function. Now we are calling my store again. I'm going to call my store instead of this this particular function store. You can see. I'm going to copy this also. I'm calling this information my store. My store. My store. So this actually implies that it's going to call. Okay, I think the function name of function is one stop, not my stop. One stop. One stop. So this actually implies that in our this should have changed to okay. this is my first page. So this 
the link. So it's just the same thing, calling the same uh, link. It's just calling the same link. But what we actually want to do, we want to use a, a get response to know what actually we clicked on. Like if I click on mobile phone, I want to know if it's actually mobile phone. I click on if I click on laptop, it's actually laptop. I click on if I click on this, it's actually a video game. I click on so yeah. In this one store, I'm still going to include the method here. Method is equal to post and get post and get. So then here I'm going to use a particular uh, get method like to say that if request that get if request that method equal to get then it means that I'm actually using a get method. So this is how the get method works. In this, how we use it. The demonstration, I'm just going to say that an item equal to. So you can see I'm passing a new parameter here. What, what I want to do is like pass a parameter here. Then I want to be able to identify that it's mobile phone I click on, it's laptop I click on, it's video game I click on. So this is what I was going to say that my, my item equal to. Item equal to um, okay, this one is mobile phone. Why this one is laptop? Why this one is video game? Equal to item equal to video. But without doing this, your computer will know that you are running a get method. So this is how it works. So we click on this, you can see the item here. You can see it here showing that item is equal to mobile phone. You can see. So this is what we use for get method. Like we have a particular parameter we want to extract. You can see clicking on this is it. Item equal to laptop. Looking on this, you see item equal to video game, which is made possible with this particular item variable in person. So, this allows us to be able to identify which link is being clicked on. So, let's see that I want to return something like I want to return, I want to return a new page for the mobile phone. And I can see that if first I have to first get the item then equal to ARGS dot get. So use this particular function. Uh, request that ALD like argument gets. So, what we want to get is the item. So, we can turn that to click on this page. It limits that you are. So you can see, let me first refresh everything. Oh, okay, okay. So it is, and I'm getting a very bad response now because I've not actually use they are specified that if you look at this code it's still pointing out like it's still a get method like it's still a get method there is always be a get method by default but let's say that you have this and i click here you see your mobile phone you are in laptop page video game page so that is it's just like we are passing a particular parameter and we are returning it. 
So way is actually this useful. So let's say a uh, way you can always use this is like let's say that we have input like a link. You can create a link. Then in your link, in within you can redirect in in the particular link. Then in your link, once you just click on the link, then you be able to get those parameters using request.arjs.get. Basically, once you have something like this, a link you have visited like this, you can always get it like this using this. If you have sometimes you can have it comma another parameter equal to another parameter equal to. So you have that you can always get it like this. The way that but the application of this is like uh where I've actually used this is use it for referrals. I use it for referrals. If you have a particular referrals link, you can see that your referral link might always be uh http something like uh, http slash slash let's say have a particular site called we are here we have a particular referral person referring it so it's like we are here dot underscore refer then um uh, okay let's see that question mark underscore question mark and i'll say that refer equal to so we uh, let's see that hola so we press equal to hola let me say four five six so this hola four five six now if this is the link of someone i created then if someone click on this referral link and the referral link is still within my application then i will be able to get the particular username using this requested get this particular how uh, ALGS does get. So this allows us to extract parameters from our link. Uh, allows us to extract parameters from our link. Then we can use this to actually check the person profile. Maybe I have to receive uh, two or five dollars if I click on a link. If I refer someone else. Like this, my friend, I give it to another person. Then the person visits the site, then I may get like two or three dollars. This actually means that clicking it, this I will write a function that we know that this particular area is actually coming from this uh, coming from a user. Then with that, I'll be able to assign the reward to the user. So that is that for this particular session web development is an interesting package we are still going to do a lot of things in couples of videos coming so i will implore you to subscribe to share the videos to your loved ones so thank you so much for being part of this tutorial bye for now